everybody for joining and uh, I am so excited to share photos and um, some stories from my recent trip to Central America. I visited uh, Panama and Costa Rica and had some um, great adventures along the way. So to start, I wanna kind of show you guys the map to describe where I went and what I did. So my first part of my trip was in Boca del Toro. So if you look on the upper uh, kind of left-hand side of Panama, it borders Costa Rica. That's where I started my trip. Um, didn't go there specifically for birds, just for some beach time and sunshine, um, but of course saw lots of great wildlife along the way. And then after visiting Boca del Toro, we went to Panama City, or near Panama City, I should say, um, and near the Panama Canal. So that's, so you can kind of visualize um, where I'm talking about. So as I mentioned, we didn't specifically visit Bocas del Toro for birds, but one of the greatest takeaways I got from visiting Central America is that there is wildlife absolutely everywhere. So one of the birds that I saw and really loved um, while staying in Bocas del Toro was this bird right here, the Montezuma or a pendula. And um, we stayed on an island in Bocas and we kind of rented a little cabin and there were birds everywhere, but just about every afternoon, a Montezuma or a pendula would perch in the tree above our cabin. And uh, they're really striking birds. You can't quite tell from this photo, but they have this really beautiful chestnut colored body. You can see that bright yellow tail, that orange tipped beak. So they're visually really striking. Um, but they also have some crazy calls and songs. And I have a clip of that that I'll play for you. So every afternoon, uh, at least one aura pendula would sit and just call and make, that was just one sort of example of the sounds they make, but um, it, it varies from the weird and wacky and it definitely, a lot of their sounds don't even sound like they should be coming from a bird. So I really enjoyed seeing aura pendulas flying around. We, went on lots of hikes and explorations while we were in Bocas. Um, we were visiting right kind of in the tail end of the rainy season. So we definitely still got uh, rain uh, while we were there, which, you know, coming from Juneau, we, we were prepared. Um, so we did lots of hiking. You can see this very muddy trail. I never thought I would miss my extra tufts or wish that I had brought them to the tropics, but we had to borrow some rain boots because it was so muddy and mucky uh, along the trail. And on this particular hike, we went out searching for these guys. Um, this photo is taken by my friend, Ted Gatlin, who is a pro professional photographer, and he was um, with us for our first part of the trip. And we were lucky enough to see lots of these strawberry poison dart frogs. It's kind of hard to tell from this photo, but these frogs are teeny, teeny, tiny. I mean, the biggest ones we saw were maybe an inch. Um, so these frogs were so small and uh, it took us a while to find them. We're kind of hiking around, hiking around. And then eventually one of us spotted this bright reddish orange little speck uh, in the sea of green foliage. And once we spotted one, our eyes kind of became attuned and we, we started seeing them everywhere. So that was really fun to see these beautiful, brightly colored little frogs. Another bird that we saw while we were hiking around um, was the golden collared mannequin. Uh, mannequins are kind of well known for um, some of their wild dance moves. And we're pretty sure that we 
actually stumbled upon a mannequin lek. And a lek is um, an area where multiple male birds will sort of display to attract females. And that's definitely what it looked like when we saw these mannequins. They were kind of hopping around and uh, doing lots of exaggerated calls and displays. And there were females fl flitting around. So I think we may have um, stumbled upon a little romantic mannequin get together. Uh, after we left Bocas del Toro, we headed back towards Panama City. And this part of the trip was really bird focused. So we specifically planned on visiting the Canopy Tower um, because I wanted to see lots and lots of birds. And this place is really interesting. Um, Canopy Tower was initially built in 1963 by the United States military uh, as a radar tower, um, but eventually uh, it was no longer used and it was abandoned. And in 1997, a man named Raul purchased this building and um, totally uh, refitted it and turned it into a birding uh, eco lodge. And what's really special about the canopy tower, if you look at the top, you can see that kind of yellow dome. Um, you can walk all the way up uh, to the top of the tower and it's such an incredible place to bird. Um, many of you I'm sure have realized how difficult it can be to bird watch in a forest. And this is especially true in Central America where there are a lot of birds that primarily exist in the canopy. So what makes this place so special and so great for birding is that you get this treetop view and um, there's just so, so, so many birds that you can see really close at eye level. Um, it was incredible. So every morning that we were at the canopy tower, this is kind of how we would start our day. We would meet our guides up at the, the top deck and we would bird watch for uh, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. And then from there, we would go out on a sort of our daily guided uh, trips um, all around Panama City area. This is me and my husband and uh, in the middle, that's our, our guide, Alex. Um, I cannot overstate how absolutely phenomenal the guides that worked at Canopy Tower were. I mean, Alex was so talented and um, the breadth of knowledge that the local guides had was just so fantastic. I mean, there are over 600 species of birds that you can see in this region. And Alex knew every bird not just by sight, not just by call. Um, he could mimic the calls. He was phenomenal. And um, the vast knowledge of these local guides really made our experience really, really special. And we saw so many birds while we were at uh, Canopy Tower and around. The first day we were, um, supposed to go out on an excursion, but the rain came in and it was just dumping, dumping rain. So we kind of postponed and um, we spent our first morning uh, birding from the tower itself, just from the top deck and actually looking out the windows. And uh, we saw so many birds just from that building. Uh, one of the reasons I really wanted to go to Central America was to see toucans and in my first day, um, I was lucky enough to see this hill build toucan. And photos really don't do a lot of these birds justice. I mean, the brilliant colors that they have was just so beautiful. And uh, it's not often that you get to see a bird with blue and orange and red and yellow all in, in one go. So this, um, this toucan was just stunning. Uh, similar to our Kill Bill Toucan, I also saw collared aracaris. Um, this photo was taken from the top of the canopy tower. Another really striking 
Bird. Canopy Tower also has um, some hummingbird feeders uh, all along the bottom level. And so while you're waiting to kind of leave for your daily trips, um, you can see so many birds just around the, the feeders. And um, this is a blue-chested hummingbird that we saw these um, hummingbirds just about every, every day. Great, great opportunity for photos as well with those hummingbird feeders. Uh, one of my uh, other favorite birds that we got to see while we were out and about um, was this male barred ant shrike. Um, may not be as colorful as some of the other birds that we got to see, but this, this little guy had so much personality. Um, we came across this bird, you can see perched on this branch, and uh, he was singing his little heart out, and I'll, I'll play the sound for you. So this bard and shrike, he was singing a song and what was so fun watching this little bird is every time uh, he would sing, his crest would totally puff up and he would get this kind of awesome little black mohawk. And then as uh, he would call, his whole body would sort of flip forward and his little bird butt would stick up in the air. And it was just really fun to, to watch. Um, so not the most colorful, but a very, very big personality. Uh, this is um, another one of the really beautiful bright birds that we were lucky enough to see. This is a green honey creeper. And um, again, these birds are like jewels that you see in the tree. They don't even look real, they're so, beautiful and bright. We were lucky enough to also see some golden hooded tanagers, um, another beautiful bright bird. And here we have some scarlet rumped tanagers. Um, again, this is another one where I, I don't think the photos could really ever do this bird justice. So we have a male and female here. Um, the male is in front, the female in back. and in person, the contrast between this kind of flamed uh, colored rump with this uh, matte black feathers and, and the sort of grayish pale blue beak was really, really beautiful. And um, we really loved seeing these guys. So this is another photo by my friend Ted. And you can see um, the little change up of the order, the female now is in front and you can see that male taking flight in the distance. We also saw quite a few mot mots. We saw a couple different species of mot mots. Um, these became one of one of my favorite birds that we saw. Um, our, our little group of birders that um, spent you know the six days together at Canopy Tower, we, we sort of jokingly called ourselves the Mot Mot crew because just about every day, everywhere we went, we saw a different species of Mot Mot. And um, when you see these birds uh, in person, they are really striking. They have this gorgeous um, sort of rufous, rusty brown head and, and that black mask. And then they have this iridescent uh, green and black, uh, or excuse me, green and blue uh, back. Um, those feathers are beautiful. And then, um, they have the, kind of a little fancy uh, tail feather. So it was always fun to see the mot mots. The other great thing about these birds is they're really great for um, photography because they sit still for a very long time. So it was easier to get photographs of these birds. They kind of have nice open perches, um, which definitely wasn't always the case with a lot of the other smaller birds that we were seeing. In addition to birds, we saw a lot of different mammals. We saw howler monkeys, and we saw agoutis and coatis, and we saw these very, very cool uh, monkeys. Uh, these are called Jeffrey's tamarins. And before we went on our trip, I had seen pictures of these uh, tamarins, but I had no idea how 
big they were, right? It's hard when you look at a photograph to, to get scale. But when I saw them in person, I was so astounded. They're very, very tiny. Um, they're the smallest monkey in Panama and their bodies are only about eight to 12 inches in length. Um, their tails add another 12 inches on that, but they're um, really small and very, very cool. They kind of have these white mohawks. Um, there was a family of Jeffrey's Tamarins that lived really close to uh, Canopy Tower. So we got some great views um, of them throughout our trip. And this is probably my favorite photo I got of the Jeffrey's Tamarin. Again, little bodies, big personalities. Um, the Tamarins travel in small family groups. Typically, it's going to be one um, breeding female. Uh, one or two adult males, and then the rest will be their offspring. So they travel around in these small family groups. One of the evenings that we were at Canopy Tower, we did uh, a night drive and the guides were very honest when we kind of signed up to do this activity. And they said, you know, we're gonna go out, we're gonna look, we're gonna drive around, we'll have a spotlight but they set very low expectations. You know, they were very honest in saying that sometimes we go out and, and we don't see anything. Um, but we got really lucky on our night drive. We saw a possum, we saw um, a two-toed sloth, we saw an armadillo, and then we also saw this Rothschild's porcupine, which visiting, you know, Panama from Southeast Alaska, of course, I was so excited to see a different species of porcupine. And this porcupine is very strange. Um, it's uh, nocturnal. And um, from what I gather, there's not a whole lot known about it. I will say, I think our uh, Juno porcupines are a heck of a lot cuter than the Rothschild's porcupine, but it was still very, very cool to see this strange uh, creature. Uh, I mentioned two-toed sloths. Um, I think when a lot of people visit Central America, they're really hoping to see sloths. And we were so lucky. We saw a lot of sloths while we were out birding. And um, I think when most people think of sloths, they think of the three-toed, which has kind of that masked appearance. Um, and two-toed sloths are really different. They kind of have more of a, a tan color. Um, they're mostly nocturnal. So we were lucky to see this one during the day um, moving around. Uh, the sloth was pretty high up in the canopy, um, but the two-toed sloths are also quite a bit bigger than the three-toed. So um, two-toads can uh, usually weigh around 20 pounds. They're normally about two and a half to three feet uh, in length versus the classic three-toed sloth. Again, I think when, when most people hear sloth, this is what they think of. And we, again, saw a lot of three-toed sloths while we were out birding, but this sloth was really special because we saw this one right outside of the canopy tower. So again, we got to look at this sloth essentially at eye level at really, really close distance, um, which was super exciting. And he actually stayed um, in the trees right outside of uh, Canopy Tower all day. So we saw him in the morning and he kind of moved a little bit and moved very, very, very slowly um, throughout the, the day. I'm saying he, uh, something that I learned while I was in Panama um, is that male three-toed sloths actually have this, um, black stripe that you can see on his back. So the females don't have that. So we tell that this is a male. And after visiting Central America, I now know why people become obsessed with sloths. It's because they are so stinking cute and very photogenic and so fun to watch. Um, so again, I felt so lucky. Um, this is actually our last full day at the Canopy Tower that we had such great sloth viewing. So after uh, six incredible days of birding at the Canopy Tower and visiting um, Panama, 
we decided to head to Costa Rica. So we only had about five days in Costa Rica. So um, because we had such a short period of time, we really wanted to focus um, and stay in one area. So you can see in the bottom, this is a map of Costa Rica and this green area is the Osa Peninsula. So one of the draws of heading to the Osa, um, there's so much to do. You can scuba dive, there's beautiful beaches, great wildlife in Corcovado National Park. And the Osa Peninsula is also um, really well known for being a great place to see scarlet macaws. So those are sort of the, the draws for why we wanted to go there. And uh, we took a long shuttle uh, bus from San Jose, Costa Rica to Sierpe. You can see near this little blue, or I guess it's kind of purpley gray dot here. Uh, once we got to Sierpe, we got on a small boat and we headed out um, along the river until we made our way out to the ocean. And we followed the coastline past Drake Bay and we um, found this great little eco lodge kind of close to the borders of Corcovado National Park. So our first part of the trip was really focused on birding. This is what we had envisioned for the second part of the trip, just relaxation. We're on our honeymoon. We want to sample the pina coladas, enjoy the beach. But of course, there's still wildlife absolutely everywhere along the Osa Peninsula. So this is a brown booby uh, perched and looking very majestic. We also saw tons of white-faced capuchins while we were there. And um, we were really lucky. Uh, just about every day that we were at our Eco Lodge uh, in the Osa, um, there was a big group of capuchins that would kind of move from one feeding area to the other. And uh, they would pass right in front of where we were eating breakfast and they would eat, eat and feed in the trees um, on the property of the Eco Lodge. So we got some really, really great views. I'm not sure what they thought of us. This um, Puchin is looking, I don't know if that's like a suspicious look or concerned, um, but it was really fun to watch them and to watch their kind of um, interactions with each other. One of our favorite things, especially in the evening, um, we would sit around sunset and we would watch the capuchins go back and forth. And they would jump from palm tree to palm tree and they would make these incredible leaps, um, jumping so, so far. And it was really, like I said, just fun to watch. A couple of the times there were some moms with their babies and the babies were not about making those big jumps. So the, the moms would actually find alternative routes that didn't involve such big leaps. So that was really exciting to, to see them every day. More toucans, um, a different species uh, that we got to see here in the Osa. This is a yellow-throated toucan. And um, again, just about every day, we saw them on various uh, uh, trees around our eco lodge. Here you can see they're um, munching on berries from this palm. Um, but again, just a, a very striking bird. Toucans are, are so beautiful. Uh, on our second to last full day, um, we did a hike to Corcovado National Park. So you could actually follow a trail. We had a guide take us from our Eco Lodge to the park itself. And it was incredible to hike through the jungle and um, it was an adventure. You can see we, we had to don our rain boots again because it was very, very muddy. Uh, we had some stream crossings. We made it to a beautiful waterfall and we saw lots of uh, wildlife along the way. So here we found an American crocodile um, basking in the sun. Um, it makes you think twice when you're doing those stream crossings, but we were assured that there was no crocodiles in that particular part of the river. We saw this beautiful tiger heron that was hunting uh, all along the river. 
and just walking through the forest itself. It was just absolutely beautiful um, to see these giant trees with these buttressed roots and to see birds and wildlife everywhere. Um, the views were gorgeous, but one thing that we didn't see uh, in our trek to Corcovado was the scarlet macaws. So we had been searching and searching and it seemed like we were always just a day late. Um, when we first got to our Eco Lodge, uh, guests had said, oh yeah, yesterday, yesterday, the macaws were right out in front. And I thought, dang, we missed them. And then we went to Corcovado and we made it to the ranger station and someone said, oh, yesterday, yesterday the macaws were, were right out in front. And so it seemed like we just kept missing them. And, uh, I really, really was hoping to see, see the scarlet macaws. So me and my husband, we kind of hemmed and hawed and we were trying to strategize, you know, what's the best way to see these birds? We considered doing another uh, trip back to the national park the next day, but that was gonna be our last full day in the OSA. And um, we just wanted to have a, a nice relaxing day before our trip ended so we decided to just relax and hike around uh, our eco lodge and just have kind of a beach day so we started by going on a hike to a beach and we made it about 15 minutes before running into these guys so these are Baird's papiers and uh, we're walking along the trail and out of nowhere there's this massive rushing sound and these two big blurs run past us and my husband looks at me and he says I think that was a tapir all I saw was a blur um so we we kind of quietly crept along the trail and we rounded a corner and there they were um tapirs are such weird looking animals they kind of have that short almost like elephantine snout um, but they are huge. So these tapirs um, can, this particular species, um, they can grow to be over 600 pounds and they can be five to eight feet long. So these are, it's hard again to get scale from photographs, but these animals were huge. And so when we, when we saw them, um, further along the trail, my husband and I were kind of hiding behind a tree, kind of peeking out and looking at them because, you know, we're, we're unfamiliar with tapirs and it's just the two of us. So we're not sure if we need to fear these animals or if they're aggressive. We don't know. So we're kind of peeking out and I take a couple photos and uh, we kind of hide back behind the, the tree um, and we watched them for a few minutes and uh, then they started to walk away. Um, we Later, when we asked the guides at our lodge, they said that they think this is um, actually a mom and, and calf, even though they look very similar in size. And what was funny is while they were walking away, um, we're assuming the mother was in front. She wasn't running, but it was almost like this fast trot, this power trot, I'd like to say, where uh, very forcefully stepping with her front feet and um, making this crazy loud noise as the kind of power speed walked away from us. So we decided, ah, I think we should leave them to their business. Um, so after that, uh, we kind of abandoned our beach hike and we decided to go to a beach a little closer to our eco lodge. We did a little bit of tide pooling and we're just enjoying the sunshine and um, the beach and the waves and this beautiful place. And uh, I was looking down the beach when something red caught my eye. And sure enough, when I looked through my binoculars, there they were. I finally saw some scarlet macaws after days of looking for them. And I did exactly what you're not supposed to do, which is I picked up my camera and my binoculars and I ran down the beach towards the birds. Luckily, I didn't scare them away. I was so excited. And there were uh, a pair of macaws. Um, this one here is feeding on beach almonds. And um, 
I got to spend maybe 20 or 30 minutes just watching this pair of macaws kind of flying around, flitting from tree to tree. And um, I honestly teared up when I saw them. I was so glad that I finally got to see these birds and see them close up and got to actually watch them and kind of watch them preen one another and, and just um, getting to spend time with these birds was a perfect way to end the trip. So our last day, our last full day on the Osa Peninsula was um, full of wildlife and just really special moments. So that was our last day. Um, the next day the boat picked us up and we headed back towards Sierra Bay and then had a very, very long travel day back to San Jose. And then um, we flew back towards Juneau the next day. Um, reflecting on our trip, I, I can't help but feel so incredibly um, grateful at all of the, the wildlife that we got to see. Um, we saw over 200 species of birds between Costa Rica and Panama and so many different types of mammals. And just being in a different kind of rainforest, I think was really, really special. You know, coming from Juneau, I'm an expedition guide and I work um, a lot of, of my days in the Tongass National Forest. So it's so cool to see this entirely different ecosystem. And um, again, we just felt um, like it was such a, a privilege to visit this new place, to um, experience another culture with so much wildlife. And uh, I will absolutely be back again um, visiting Panama and Costa Rica. Um, I had some of his photos in this presentation, but if any of you are interested in seeing more of his photos, he's a much better photographer than I am. Um, this is my friend Ted Gatlin's website. Um, if you want to see more tropical birds, and he has photographs from all over the world. Um, but uh, that is kind of the, the highlights from my trip. Thank you all so much for listening. And if you have any questions, I am happy to answer. <laughs>